Hi, it's Jenny here to tell you about elements and compounds and atoms and molecules. So we're looking at the periodic table here and it is made up of all these elements, 118 to be exact. And these elements are believed to be the basic constituents of everything we know of in the universe. Um, so if you think about the things that you can see, like your computer or um, your hands or a piece of paper, everything's made out of something. And these are, these are the basic building blocks that make up those things. And even things that we can't see either, like the air that we breathe, um, these are all made out of atoms and molecules. So what are atoms and molecules? Um, they're the smallest particles of matter. So for example, a sample of iron, like in an iron nail, uh, these are these are made out of iron atoms. Um, if you have um, biological molecules like proteins uh, made out of carbon and oxygen bonded together with nitrogen and sulfur and phosphorus. So you have all these different possible combinations that can occur. The way that we think of atoms and molecules, uh, because you can't see the individual particles, we just like to make draw little cartoons and rep to represent them. So for example, for uh, an element like nickel here, and I, we like to think of that as um, just a group of tiny particles called atoms. So these would be nickel atoms right here. And each element has a symbol, either one letter or two letters. And the capitalization is important. The first one is always capitalized. So we've got nickel here. What if we had another element like carbon right here? Well, carbon, would, we would also show circles, but they would be different circles. Maybe we would fill those in. Okay, so here are carbon atoms uh, piled together right here. So the point is that whatever carbon atoms are, nickel atoms are different from those carbon atoms. But there are some elements that like to combine their atoms to form molecules. So for example, uh, and molecules are just groups of atoms. So seven elements, which we use a mnemonic Brinkelhoff to identify them. Brinkelhoff, B-R-I-N-C-L-H-O-F. These seven elements uh, are what we call diatomic. So the seven elements listed by their abbreviation Brinkelhoff and these are what we call diatomic. Dia means two, atomic means a uh, atoms, so diatomic elements. And what that means is that when you look at atoms of nickel, or sorry, atoms of nitrogen here, nitrogen, normally an atom is just one circle. Nitrogen, because it's part of Brinkelhoff, likes to be in a group of two. So nitrogen molecules, exist in packets of two. And so when you have two atoms, anytime you have more than one atom bonded to another, it's called a molecule. So these are nitrogen molecules. And because there's two in each molecule, it's called N2. Okay. How about oxygen? We hear about oxygen that we breathe all the time. You know we breathe oxygen. So oxygen, is that diatomic? So let's go over here. It's part of Brinkelhoff. It's right here. And I circled it. So yes, oxygen too is diatomic. So I'm going to draw oxygen as two atoms bonded together. So here's my oxygen atoms or oxygen molecules. All right. So that applies to any of these seven elements right here. If I had an oxygen molecule and a carbon atom, if they all bonded together, then I'd get something like this. I'd get a carbon and I'd have the oxygen molecule probably break up in a chemical reaction to bond with this carbon. I would form something like this. Now this is a molecule with different elements in it. So it's got a carbon and it's got oxygen. It's so whenever it has more than one element, it's called a compound. So, and you can see this is CO2, which is called carbon dioxide. And it is not on the periodic table because it's not an element, it's composed of many elements. So this is called a compound. 
You can tell also it's not an atom of CO2, it's a molecule of CO2 because there's one carbon and two oxygen atoms bonded together to make a group of atoms. So now you can see um, each of these are called elements. Elements are made out of atoms. Elements can also be made out of molecules, especially if you have Brinkelhoff elements. They like to form um, diatomic molecules. And then you can also have molecules that are made of different elements, and those are called compounds. So it's good to review those terms. I'll write them down right here. So you have element versus compound. And where a compound is more than one element, you also have an atom versus a molecule where a molecule is more than one atom grouped together. Okay, so to demonstrate with some molecular level pictures, an element would be one type of atom. Compound would be multiple types of atoms bonded together. So maybe a blue one with a red one or something like that. Um, an atom would be just each an individual particle. A molecule would be um, whether it was a compound or whether it was an element, maybe it's the same type of atom bonded to together, or maybe it's um, two different kinds bonded together. Molecules can be either elements or compounds. You're also going to learn about the terms pure substance versus a mixture. Now, a pure substance is exactly that. It's going to be either some kind of element and only that element, or it's going to be a compound and only that compound. So I can have something like pure copper, and that's going to look like only copper atoms present. Or I could even have a compound, like I had CO2, remember? I had carbon bonded to two oxygens. So I'm going to make some CO2 molecules right here. Okay, so see how these are all the same? CO2, 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 CO2. This is considered pure CO2, just like this was considered pure copper. So pure substance means no matter whether it's an element or a compound, that is the only thing that exists. So everything looks the same within that sample. In a mixture, you can have um, more than one substance. So you can have a mixture of these two things together, let's say. Uh, there are two types of mixtures also. There's what we call a homogeneous mixture, and there we have something called a heterogeneous mixture. So a homogeneous mixture is where we have a uniform one-phase system. So we think of things as being mixed evenly or uniformly or randomly. Okay, so homo means same, meaning everything looks the same, same phase. There's one phase. Hetero means different phases or non-uniform. So things aren't mixed well. You can see different components in the mixture. You can tell one part of it looks different from the other. I bet you can think of examples of each one. Let's look at the homogeneous first. When you look at this, it all looks the same. So you might think of this like a glass of um, tap water. In tap water, you don't see the impurities usually, unless it's dirt or something like that, hopefully, or rust. Hopefully you don't. But you would see all the components mixed in there all the sodium ions that might be in your water or the fluoride ions that are in there, you don't see those with your eye. So we would consider this all a glass of tap water to look the same. So molecular level wise, if I was to zoom in and look inside this water until I could see the individual particles of water, I would see things that were mixed uniformly, meaning here's my water molecules and then here's my sodium ions, and here's my fluoride ions right here. See how everything would just sort of be mixed together randomly. 
So this is considered homogeneous. Now let's look at heterogeneous non-uniform, meaning we have more than one phase that you can visibly see with your eye. So for example, if I had oil and water, so here's my glass and I have oil and I have water. So clearly, if I zoom in to each one of these layers, I'm going to see different things. So in my oil layer, I'm going to see oil molecules, which are really long chains of carbons. Okay, so there's my oil molecules. And then if I zoom into my water, I'm going to see water molecules. And see how they look different, and I can see the difference with my eye. So that's heterogeneous.